This is the awesome, good-looking second version of the 8010 radio controller from Radio Link. In this video, I will talk about its main characteristics, how to bind it, how to use it, and finally make some tests with it. So let's get started. <laughs> What's up my friends, welcome back! This is the box that I received from Banggood online store. It's a good looking box, but I'm more interested in the inside content. I open the box and take out the polyester case inside. Here is our radio controller. We also have the R12DS receiver telemetry module that we'll talk about later and a spare part for the joystick resource system. That's it! Let's take a first look at the controller. You could get one grey colored or metallic orange like this one. It is quite big and feels perfect in your hand. Without the batteries it weighs around 650 grams, which personally I think it's a perfect way to carry in your hands. The size is around 180 by 180 millimeters, and it's also quite thick. I personally like big controllers, the way it feels in my hands is awesome. So let's take a look at its controls. It has a total of 8 logic switches. 3 of these switches have 3 positions. 4 of them with 2 positions and the final one has a resource system that pulls it back when released. On the side we have 2 sliders which correspond to analog channels. And in the middle of the controller we have 3 knobs, so 3 more analog channels. I think the knobs are a little bit small for my fingers, but they are good enough. As for the joysticks they move very smooth. They are made of plastic and have a removable stick in case you want to use longer ones. Joysticks are one of the most important things for me when talking about radio controllers. I don't want any dead point. I want them to move smooth and with high precision. I also want a fast response of the resource system and this controller has it. As for the precision we will have to make some tests later. On the front part, we also have the adjustment buttons, which are two simple push buttons for each axis. The adjustment of the joysticks is made digital, as for almost all high quality radio controllers. For example, I have this older controller that I've hacked in a previous video. It works with an Arduino and the NRF24 radio module connection. The adjustment system for the joysticks is made out of mechanical sliders. So when I'm home, using the Arduino monitor or the oscilloscope, I could set each potentiometer to its middle position. But if I touch even a little bit the adjustment slider, everything is lost, and since you have no screen for this controller, it would be impossible to find the middle position without external measurements. And that leads us to the next part of our controller, the LCD screen. It has a diagonal of 86 mm. 320 by 880 pixels and it's a full color TFT display. To navigate through the menu, we have two push buttons on the left side and a small joystick and a knob with push button on the right of the display. On the radio controller side, you will find a USB connector and on the back the PS2 connector for virtual simulation, the metal handle and the battery compartment. I open the battery compartment. Inside we have this 8 1.5 volts battery pack holder. The manual of the controller tells us that it could accept up to 15 volts and you could also use 3S LiPo battery as well. The connector is just a normal 2 pin one and it has polarity. So once you add the batteries, make sure of the polarity and connect the power to the controller. I close the compartment and power up the controller for the first time using the middle switch. So here we have the main screen. 
as you can see it has multiple colors. Long press the mode push button in order to enter the main menu. Press end to go back. Use the joystick on the right side to navigate through the menu and the knob to adjust the values. Push the knob button to select. Let's leave this aside for a while and look at the receiver. This is the R12 DS 10 channel receiver. As you can see it has channels from 1 to 11 and the final one could also be a serial bus. It also have an I2C communication port. To this port you can connect the telemetry module. This kit also include that and wires to connect it. On the side is the pairing button. To pair it, this is what you have to do. As shown here, the bottom pin of each raw is ground, the middle is 5 volts and the top one is signal. To power the receiver we need to supply 5 volts to the VCC pin. I will use one of the ASC's 5 volts output of my Arduino based drone. Connect the pins to only one row. I connect the LiPo battery to the drone and before I power it up I press and keep press the pairing button. I power on the drone and a red LED starts flashing inside of the receiver. At the same time you must have the radio transmitter powered on as well. When the LED stops blinking you are successfully paired. The signal icon should appear on the display. Now let's test the telemetry module. Connect ground, VCC and the I2C pins from the module to the receiver. If everything is powered on you should get the receiver voltage on your display. Now connect the 3S LiPo battery plug and you should also receive the voltage of that on the display. You could measure the voltage with a multimeter and then adjust the value here. My battery has 12.5 volts but I received 12.4. I press menu and go to system. Here on the external trim I set the value to plus 0.1. There you go. Now the voltage is calibrated. The telemetry module is a nice thing to have especially when you fly drones with a short battery lifetime. The controller is also compatible with the R6DS receiver. This has 6 pins with PWM outputs. But one of the pins could also have 10 channels PPM output. So for a few more dollars you could have this one as well and use it with some of those mini drones that use PPM signals. I will leave the purchase link for this one in the description as well. Ok so that was the receiver. Now let's go a little bit through the menu. Press the end push button to see the channel's values. Press it once again to see the receive values in case of using telemetry module. Long press the mode button. I want to use my controller with my Arduino based drone. Go to model type. As you can see it has helicopter mode, plane acrobatics, a bunch of gliders models and finally multi-rotor. For drones I select multi-rotor. Long press the knob in order to select. Now as you can see when the joysticks are put in their maximum values I've got a negative 100 on the screen, except for channel 2. I want all of the channels to be the same. For that I go to reverse, select the second channel, set it to reverse and long press the knob. Now all the 4 channels are the same. Also I can see that channel 2 is not exactly in the middle which would be zero value. Using the calibration buttons I set that to zero. Now let's give a name to this mode. In the menu go to auxiliary channels. 
Here, you could assign one of the knobs, switches or sliders to the six remaining channels. The transmitter could send up to 12 channels. You could select that in the menu as well. As you can see, the knobs are labeled with VRA, B and C. I want those to be channels 10, 9 and 8. Here, I select those knobs for channel 10, 9 and 8. I set switches B and C to channels 5 and 6. The controller is ready. Now let's make some tests. I connect my DIR oscilloscope first to the PWM receiver pins. By the way, this is the 1000 series oscilloscope from Keysight and it's a great tool to have around. Ok, so we know that PWM signals of basic radio controllers has a pulse width from 1 millisecond to 2 milliseconds and that gives us a middle value of 1.5 milliseconds pulse width. I place the width measurement on my oscilloscope. With the joystick in the middle position I've got a pulse of around 1.5 milliseconds and that's good. The lowest value is almost 1 millisecond, but the highest is around 1.92 milliseconds. That's ok, it doesn't have to be exactly 2 milliseconds. The middle position is more important to be the right one. So for this test, I start with the middle value of 1502.8 microseconds. Now I press the calibrating button one time. The value increased to 1506.8. I press it once again and now I have 1511.4. So as you can see there is a 4 microsecond for each point and that for me it's a quite nice resolution. On the features we have that the receiver has a 0.5 microseconds trembling which is a good value. The response between the joystick's movement and the received signal is awesome. I can see no delay. Now, in order to test the range I've used a GPS module and the Arduino. I've connected the receiver to my mini oscilloscope and started the test loop that will increase and decrease the pulse width as we can see here. The Arduino will print on this OLED screen the distance difference between the start and end points. On open field I received a good signal at 800 meters, 900 and even up to 1.2 kilometers. At higher distances the duty remained the same as the last time it was received. And inside of the city, depending on my position or if I had something in front of me, I had a perfect signal up to 800 meters. Ok, so it's a nice radio controller. It's quite complex, multiple channel, good joystick quality and nice precision. It's easy to calibrate and configure. A bunch of switches and controls. Nice color LCD, amazing look and also a decent price compared with other high quality radio controllers. It's compatible with the 10 channel receiver and also with the PPM R6DS receiver. You've got the telemetry module included in the kit which is a nice bonus. In a future video I will show you how to use this PWM output with the Arduino based drone. So stay tuned for that. I hope that you enjoyed this review. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. If you consider helping my projects, check my new Patreon page and help my workshop grow and have a lot of more other cool tutorials. Thanks again and see you later guys.